Hello, this is going to be a review of the movie Bird Box, which is on Netflix now. And there's been a lot of ranting and raving about this. I mean, I've seen articles online and stuff, and uh, I don't know. I think that book, Netflix was boasting about how many viewers it had or whatever. It doesn't really have that great of rating on Rotten Tomatoes last time I checked, but I do think that it was a really good movie. I found out about this movie because I logged into Facebook one day, and one of my friends uh, had a post saying that he gave Bird Box a 4 out of 5 and you should really watch it, so I was kind of interested. It's something I didn't really hear about, and I told one of my co-workers about the movie, and he watched it, and he said it was great, and that I should watch it, and so I finally got around to watching it a couple days ago with my mom. She liked it, I liked it. This movie reminded me a lot of an M. Night Shyamalan movie. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. That's how I'm going to pronounce it, but I like his movies, and um, a lot of his movies, I think, have great ideas. They don't always follow through. They kind of fall flat in the end. This movie reminded me a lot of the movie The Happening, and I'm going to talk about the plot. I'm going to get spoilers in this and just tell you what I can remember from the movie, and maybe things that I liked that I didn't like. I don't know who directed it. I don't know basically any of the actors except for Sandra Bullock, which I think she's a great actor. You know, she does a lot of chick flicks. I have a movie of hers called 28 Days, which is a uh, kind of a movie about uh, drug rehabilitation. I think it's pretty good. Uh, but I, I also saw in the theater Hope Floats a long time ago. I don't really remember that one much, but I think she's a pretty good actress for the kind of movies that she does. This was definitely a different kind of movie of hers. This might be my favorite Sandra Bullock movie. Um, so the only other actor that I really recognized was this Asian guy who plays a priest on a movie or a show called Oz about prison that was on HBO. And uh, and here he plays a homosexual, which they don't really play into that, but they just mention it. And so let me talk about the plot, I guess. Um, Sandra Bullock, we're, we're introduced to her character. She has a roommate. I don't know if it's related to her sister or whatever. Just, I'm just going to say her roommate, another female. Sandra Bullock is pregnant, and for some reason the guy that got her pregnant, she's not with any longer, and so her roommate's saying that you need to get out and you need to meet people, and Sandra's like depressed, and she says, you know, you don't want to be lonely, and so I don't remember everything about how it begins, but eventually, well, they see on the news that overseas or something, there's something going on and the air that's making people crazy, it's making people commit suicide. So it's just like this this massive thing that's on the news and it's like terrifying or whatever. Well, uh, we see Sandra Bullock go to the hospital and she gets like a sonogram done, you know, check with her baby and uh, she's not really too thrilled about having a child, I don't think. And anyways, when she's leaving the hospital, there's a the woman starts like bashing her head into the into a, a window she kills herself and so Sandra recognizes that you know what she saw on TV is now here in America and you know it's, it's right there and everybody starts going crazy she gets in the car with her roommate they're leaving and there's chaos just everywhere vehicles crashing and explosions and people dying and killing themselves and um, we see that her roommate is driving the vehicle and her roommate sees something that frightens her or makes her sad and her eyes kind of change and she just drives forward like into another car or something and she wrecks and they both crawl out of the vehicle and then her roommate walks in front of a semi and gets killed so she commits suicide so all these people are killing themselves for some reason this hasn't happened to Sandra Bullock yet she um, a lady uh, beckons her to come into this house where these other survivors are and the lady that comes to save her uh, gets stuck with whatever it is and she kills herself too. She There's like a burning car and she walks into the car and she sits down in the car. Well they have Sandra Bullock come to this house and they have like all the windows closed I think. They figure out that you know it's something that you see that's out there that drives you crazy and I'll probably skip over things. I don't want to just go over you know spend time just going over the entire plot but it's like an apocalyptic movie where like everybody's dying and you know there's tons of movies like that 
uh, you know, just like zombie films or whatever, where there's a select few group of survivors, and uh, there's a lot of mystery involved to this, though. We don't really understand what exactly is going on, and the film never really answers all that. You know, we end up with more questions. But uh, there's a group of people that survive, and basically, you know, they cover, like, all the people groups. You know, they've got a couple of black people, they've got the homosexual guy, they've got, like, an obese woman. They've got, like, the elderly, and maybe that's just in my mind. I don't know if, you know, Netflix is trying to pander to all these different audiences and trying to please everybody, or, you know, if, if it's just more of a natural thing, but, you know, it makes me question that. I think it's just because of the age, this age of, you know, political correctness, and I'm like, okay, there's specifically these people groups there. Um, you know, it doesn't majorly bother me. It's, it's whatever but it makes you question things like that. The group of people, though, are really fine, though, I guess. Uh, the guy who owns the house that they're in is that Asian guy that I talked about who was the priest on Oz, and uh, they briefly mentioned that he's a homosexual or something, and one guy's like, yeah, you and your husband were good people or something. I don't know, but, you know, so we realize that he's gay, but he has this idea about what if we, you know, they're like, how are we going to get supplies or how are we going to leave here? You know, we're stuck here. We can't go outside. We can't look at whatever it is. Or if we go outside, we got to be blindfolded. And he comes up with this idea, how about we use like security cameras? It's not really looking, it's, you know, it's looking through a camera and it's not the same. So they strap him to a chair and have him look at the cameras and it, it ends up killing him through that way too. So that's not an option. They end up going to a grocery store because they walk outside with blindfolds, or they get in a vehicle, and they cover the vehicle's windows, and they the vehicle has, like, detection, whether there's something around it, so, and it has GPS. Um, somehow, through all this chaos, satellites and stuff are still working. So there's little things like that that I can point out about this movie and say, oh, it's kind of unrealistic. You know, they run over a person. You see them run over, like, a person's head. It doesn't show show the you know running over the head, but right before it cuts away, right before, and they're like, oh, that was a speed bump, you know, kind of funny, whatever. But that made me think too, with like the bones in the skull, like puncture the tire or something. Maybe I'm getting too specific about it, but I don't want to critique a movie like that because you know there's other lots of movies that I love that you know I want to be fair and you know it's a movie you gotta let some things go. They go to the, the grocery store, a few of them, a few of them stay back at home. Um, there's, you know, there's a handful of people there. There's Sandra Bullock, and later on they let this bigger girl come in, and they, there's an older guy who's kind of, has an attitude, he's, he's kind of mean, and uh, he's very rough. And the older guy, his wife is the one that went to save Sandra Bullock that died for her. So he kind of holds that against Sandra Bullock. You know, my wife died to save you. And, you know, you need to be grateful or whatever. He's very kind of resent, he resents that. And um, that's another thing, too, about kind of the emotion of this movie. Like, if something like this happened, you'd probably be in shock and wouldn't know how to react. But it didn't seem like people were really maybe as sad as they should have been. I mean, it's very tragic events, but that's kind of not the focus of the movie, I guess, so it's kind of not the way that it is, but we've got, like, a, a, a woman who's in the police academy, and then there's, like, this gangbanger guy, you know, uh, he's into drugs, he's covered in tattoos and stuff, so he's kind of like your stereotypical criminal type. They're both younger, they kind of end up falling into romance, there's this black guy that ends up falling into romance with Sandra Bullock, that bigger girl that they let in, she's pregnant also, so Sandra Bullock's pregnant and this other girl's pregnant. Um, there's an old elderly woman, which you don't really even see a lot of, I don't think, and there's, I don't know, I'm probably missing some characters, but I'm trying to think of all these people. Um, anyways, a, a couple of them, a few of them stay back at the home, a few of them go to the grocery store, they end up making it there successfully. They gather food and, and items. The older guy, you know, he wants to get the liquor. And and he comes up with this idea, why don't we just stay here? We got food for years and stuff. And, and Sandra Bullock or, or the other ones are like, well, that would be, 
you know, selfish. What about the people that are stuck back there? We need to get to them. But I think, you know, his great his idea was great. Why wouldn't they stay there? Why wouldn't they go get the other people and then bring them there? Apparently that didn't cross their mind. That's kind of stupid to me. Yeah, they should have stayed in the grocery store. But, you know, let's go back to the house. Let's carry everything back there. Whatever. Um, now, things are going to get kind of foggy with me, what happened where, but... When they're in the grocery store, okay, there's also this bigger black guy, I forgot about him. He was the one who worked at the grocery store. And uh, he ends up dying there because there's some guy that knocks on the door, like, let me in, let me in. And, and the grocery store guy recognizes him, he's like, yeah, I work with him. Um, and he was, uh, they, wasn't sh they weren't sure whether to let him in or not. And they started to let him in and he was very uh, much like he was going to attack them. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly. I can't remember if all that happened there, but the black guy kind of rushes at him, pushes him out of the door to save them, and then we just figure out the black guy's dead now, too. Um, so there ends up being this thing where, like, apparently, like, mentally ill people um, are not affected by it. They're not affected by whatever is out there that people are seeing that's making them kill themselves, um, they actually kind of, you know, they want people to see it, and they try to force people to see it. So they get back to the house, and um, the girls are about to give birth. Well, they let in another guy who they're not sure about. The bigger girl lets him in. She's like, well, I would have died if you guys wouldn't have let me in, so I felt bad. And she wanted to pass it on, so she let this other guy in. And they were unsure about him. At first, you know, um, the elderly guy, you know, wanted to attack him or whatever. So they kind of put him in the garage. And um, they put the elderly guy in the garage because they thought he was too belligerent or whatever. And this guy ends up being crazy, okay? Later on, um, they end up, he ends up taking out this this portfolio thing with all these pictures and there's all these drawings that he's making and they're like demonic pictures and stuff. And earlier on, the, the bigger black guy that died in the supermarket, he was writing like a book on religion and he thought, you know, this is the apocalypse and he had all these theories and myths about what was going on. And so nobody really understands it completely. Everybody has their different theories. But we see this guy draw all these demonic pictures or whatever, so it's kind of freaky. And then the black guy, um, the other one that likes Sandra Bullock, he sees it, and uh, I don't remember exactly what happens. And there's something like birds, the way birds react to these things, they freak out. And so Sandra gets these birds in the supermarket, she ends up keeping them with her. And that's why it's called Bird, bird Box. She ends up keeping these birds, and they're kind of like a signal for whenever, you know, whatever is bad is around. This guy they let in, though, he ends up being crazy. He, he takes the bird cage, he puts it in the freezer. He starts opening up the windows because, you know, if people look outside or whatever, it's going to kill them. And, or make them kill themselves. He, uh, he ends up getting a scrap with the black guy or something. He knocks him out. And the girls are given birth. The two girls are finally given birth. And they give birth to their kids, and he goes up there, and he's like, I want to see your babies, I want to see your babies. He looks at them. Then he opens up the windows up there, and they start freaking out. And um, I think that he grabs the bigger girl and, like, opens her eyelids and makes her watch. Now, he tells them, I forgot, I'm going back, I'm going forward and back, but when they let him in, he tells them that um, somehow the mentally insane people aren't affected by it and they tried to force his eyes open so that he would see it, but he escaped them. Well, it turns out that he is one of them. Um, and so the bigger girl ends up killing herself and she rushes out of the, the window and uh, he also killed the elderly guy that was in the garage because he opens the garage door or whatever. Um, something like that. But, and maybe he ends up shooting him with the shotgun because that guy gets in or something. I don't remember. There was a shotgun involved. But it ends up being like the black guy and him end up scrapping. And uh, the black guy ends up killing him. And he goes up there. And it's basically just the black guy and Sandra Bullock left and the two kids. 
And, you know, the, the woman beside Sandra said, you know, if anything ever happened to her, for her to watch her kid. And also, I forgot to say that this movie skips time, kind of like I'm skipping time while I'm telling you, I'm going forward and backward. It shows us scenes like five years in the future where she's with these kids and they're grown up and they're like going down a river and stuff. And then it goes back into the past. So we're, we're going back and forth wondering, you know, what's going on here. Well, they end up getting a call, uh, like on a radio, that, you know, they're, they're checking like the CB radio to see if anyone's out there. They end up getting a hold of somebody and they say, we've got a, a place, a community where everybody can go, but the only ways to get there is the river. Hopefully you don't have children because it's very rough. Uh, you know, there's rapids and everything, uh, but it's at the end of the river, you can get there. And there ends up being, you know, more crazy people come in and the black guy ends up dying, so it's only Sandra and the kids. So she decides that they're gonna go for, to find this place. And they say, when you get there, just listen for the birds and, and you can see where it is. She takes the birds with her. They end up going on the river and there's a lot of, there's trials and stuff there. There's a guy that tries to attack her, she kills him. And, you know, once they get to the place, uh, well, she says that one of the kids is gonna have to look uh, when, when they get to the rapids and and she's going to decide which kid it is and I guess that she I think she gave birth to a son and the other girl had a daughter but you know she's it seems like maybe she's going to make the daughter look and the daughter's going to die because you know it's not hers or whatever she decides she's not going to have the kids look they're just going to go there blind they're just going to figure it out the boat, the boat ends, up, ends up tipping over but they find each other because she cries out and the kids have, you know, bells they can ring so they can find each other. It shows before that she trained them with sounds and stuff to hear, you know, when you're close, the sound's louder, and when you're further, the sound's softer, and stuff like that. So they have these ways of, you know, she goes off and tries, she finds a place. She has like a, um, like a wire that she has with her, like fishing string or whatever, I don't know. But she uh, she attaches it, you know, to the boat or whatever, and then when she walks, she has like a way to get back to it. So she has all these methods to come up with to get around this, and which is interesting how people can persevere and like anything. We just figure out ways around situations like this. And um, anyway, they end up making it to the place. They get to the woods. And the kids, they get separated because she falls off a cliff area. The kids are walking around blindfolded. And whatever this is in the air can also call out to them. It can also play tricks on their minds. And, and um, they play her mom's voice, uh, their mom's voice saying, you know, you can let off the blindfold, take off the blindfold. And then she's yelling, no, don't take off the blindfold. So. They end up keeping them all and they find each other. They get to the place where they were supposed to go and find out that it is a um, community of blind people. Because obviously blind people are infected by this because they can't look at whatever it is. So that's interesting. And when we get there, she sees the nurse that was gonna deliver her baby. And we realize you know, that she has called the kids boy and girl <laughs> because she has, she's, you know, she's so detached from everything, and, um, and she ends up giving them names, and so it kind of has like a warm ending, whatever, that, you know, she, she changes as a person through all of this, and that's kind of what the whole thing is about. Um, so, yeah, so it reminds me a lot of the movie The Happening, starring Mark Wahlberg, that was an M. Night Shyamalan movie, where, um, the, the problem in that movie was like nature is mad at man or something like that and it made people go crazy and they like walk backwards and kill themselves basically so you know there's a lot of mystery to that um, it kind of explained a little more than this movie this left it a lot more open for what was going on but that's what makes you interested and keep wanting to watch this movie is trying to understand more you know, a lot of reviews gave this an average rating or below average, but I think it's above average. I think it's interesting. It's not a movie I'd want to watch all the time, but I would have no problem watching it again if somebody wanted to watch it with me. Um, 
you know, the acting isn't really that great. It's really just the concept, and, um, you know, there's a lot of unoriginal things there, but then they did add in some original stuff. So, you know, Sandra Bullock's acting is fine. It's not even that great, but, you know, she stands out the most. Uh, there's not a lot else. So, I don't know. And it's hard to give, you know, ratings. I don't even know if I want to do ratings. But, you know, I'd say just a 9 out of 10 or something. It's no perfect. It's not perfect, but it is really good. And I've said, I reviewed The Master. The, the Master and gave that a 9 out of 10. That had amazing performances, amazing cinematography and everything. And this is nothing like that. But it's interesting. And, you know, the story is original enough. Um, it's probably obviously below that, and I'm being too generous, but I don't really know. I'm going to have to come up with some kind of a system, you know, based on the characters and the story and the acting and the, the sounds and the way it's filmed and everything, and then give it a rating. But uh, I think it's above average, for sure. Um, it's just it's an enjoyable movie. Um... I don't know. I don't really know what else to say about it. <laughs> um, I don't know. I kind of don't feel like talking anymore about this movie. <laughs> like I said, it's interesting how people come up with these systems to persevere things. And I've had to do that a lot in my life. You know, you, when something doesn't work the way it should, you find a way around it, some kind of ghetto way to get around it. Kind of makes me think of my friend who said that, you know, like, his brakes quit working or something and so or no it was like his gas or his accelerator quit working so he like tied a string like in the engine or something and he was like pulling it to give it gas which is idiotic and illegal right but like people just come up with ways to get around things just to, to keep going and so I think that has a lot to, to speak about the perseverance of people in this movie where you know if there's something that you can't look at but people still find ways to survive around this um, but, yeah, I don't know. It was interesting. That's all I'm going to say. Went on long enough. So thanks for watching. God bless.